There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell, and you're watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio all the way across the continental United States with my good friend, Reagan Archibald. Reagan, what's up, my brother? How are you? So good. Yeah, great to be back on the show. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to have you. So you guys, Reagan's been on the show before. Uh, him and I are now friends. Monica and I went out to his center, which is East West in, I think at the end of March, correct? This yeah. year and actually had an awesome treatment. Uh, We'll talk about that more on the show, but for those of you guys that don't know him, he is literally one of the world's leading anti-aging peptide, functional medicine, and longevity specialists for sure. He's an international speaker and, of course, the author of nine books. And we're going to go really deep today on just the state of the union as we see it right now in just the you know age management, anti-aging, longevity space, because as you and I were just talking off air, there's a lot of stuff that is coming into the marketplace, some good, some bad. And I think it's hard to discern for the average person uh, what is good and what is bad. I mean, do you, do you pretty much agree with that at this point? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, um, you know, it started, uh, we, we've been doing a, like regenerative medicine services for about 14 years. Yeah. And uh, right when we started doing it, then, you know, about two years later, everybody's like, oh, we need to use these perinatal yeah. tissue stem cells. And I would have reps come to me and, and hand off their vials of stem cells and have the, the biggest claims. And I'd say, I'm going to go test it. And, uh, you know, so we, we had flow cytometry, we had colonizing formulated assays, and some of the products were just like literally saline with a few proteins. No, no real resemblance of any cellular material at all. And, and that's when I realized like this whole world is, um, you know, you've got to be careful because a lot of people, you know, they don't know what they don't know. And even the, the new multi-level marketing peptide company that you shared with me, I was like, plant-based tessamorelin. <laughs> it's orally available. I'm like, what planet are they from? Like, I mean, you and I are into like esoteric stuff, but that's like, that's like fiction. That's, that's like hallucination. So yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, it's unreal. Be- it's really, I'm glad you said that. Uh, we won't call the person out by name, but it's just, yeah, dude. I mean, every day, another scam comes across my desk. You know, people text me and, and as you were just saying, and obviously we're going to get to the points of this podcast, but it's hard, as you said, because people don't know what they don't know. And people can be really, really smart in certain things, especially their fields of endeavor. But when it comes to peptides or bioregulators or, you know, you know, like you said, arcane esoteric supplements, if it's got a good marketing spiel and, 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 you know, some, you know, high level huckster with 50 accreditations behind his name, you know, it's, 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 it, it's not as easy to smell out the scams as I want to say, as it once was, especially because as you know, social media will, sw- will surround these people with quote unquote fake credentials and followers, yeah. you know, and audiences and all this stuff. And so people will sometimes see that. I mean, I know, and again, we're rabbit holing, but this is, I think, in, uh, relative to what we're talking about. If you and I go on YouTube now, which, you know, every now and then I do. Sure. Uh, and it's always to read something or to research something or to listen to something that's interesting relative to my field. My God, Reagan, the way they behaviorally target us now is insane. You can be sucked in to four Fast. or five relevant, yeah. you know, podcasts before you even know it, you've wasted 20, 30, perhaps an hour of your time. And then you're like, my God, I got to get back to what, what I was on task yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, you know, props to the technology and the AI that's doing all of this stuff, but it's like, I tell people now, 
if you seriously want to be productive in the course of your day, you really cannot have any kind of apps on your phone that show video. Yeah. Because you're, you're not getting the full context. It's like reading the yeah. headline of articles. Exactly. And then you exactly. think that because you read the headline, you understand the context of the article. The headline's just the hook. And that's like the shorts. You know, like when YouTube put shorts right. on, I, yeah. I remember my marketing guy was like, we got to do like, let's do peptide pep talk. And so we just threw out all these peptides. And so I, and then I, I'm like, what, what are these shorts? And then I looked at them and I'm like, oh, this is like, that's the dopamine addiction. Like, I right. don't want to be part of that gravy. Exactly. Train. Dude. Like, exactly. It's, wild. it's funny you said that because we a hundred percent agreement and a hundred percent on the same, uh, same vein. I mean, I deleted my TikTok. Refuse. Absolutely. Yeah, I've refuse. never been on it, but, um, I refuse. I, my, my kids you. were on it for a minute. Then I learned about it. And I was like, Hey, I'll pay a hundred bucks if you get off that. So I, I wanted it to be somewhat of a choice, yeah, I know. but I know. Um, and they, I know. they got off it and it's great. Yeah. Crazy. My daughters, uh, my daughters are on Instagram and Snapchat. So okay. there's always something, you know, and obviously yeah. we want to limit their tech as much as possible, but they're, they're also, then, you know, they're friends. That's how they communicate. I yeah. mean, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but yeah, I mean, the dopamine short thing has literally destroyed human intelligence. I mean, yeah. this is not you and me, just, you know, two guys glamoring up on the, on the internet. This is a fact. You, you can look into the data, you know, people will talk about now Google IQ, but I want to say the standard mean deviation and IQ intelligence quotient in the West in the last 10 years has literally dropped nine points. Nine Holy points. Cow. Are you kidding nine. me? No. No, I mean, that's why I always tell people now that wow. the average person consuming content online is probably has an intelligence quotient of seven to nine points, seven to nine points over mental retardation. Jeez. Like that's, that's where we are now. And as an email marketer, you know, like I am, it's obvious. And the people that respond to me, they can't write two sentences, dude. Yeah. You know, and I know, and we're going to get into that. We can just tr segue into that right now with peptides, but like, People that are inflamed physically are also, as you know, inflamed mentally. Yeah. Right. So Argue it is it. order for people who are suffering insulin, you know, insulin uh, resistant, metabolically deranged, obese, you know, even, even 20 to 30 pounds overweight, the brain's also in, in, inflamed. So it's very right. difficult for them to communicate effectively, especially in written, the written form, you know, cause they can't, again, I see it all the time. People literally, you know, and again, I'm blessed to have a massive email list, but I mean, People will send me emails replying to the stuff. And I swear to you, Reagan, I, I don't know how to respond because I can't even interpret what they're saying in the email in yeah. response to me. I get the same thing. I mean, um, three or four times a week, I have to ask somebody to clarify what they're looking for. I'm like, I'm right. I apologize. I don't understand what you're asking. Um, and yeah, and I, I think yeah. this is, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really important because in in society, if we want to progress, if we want to really evolve, if if yeah. you want to be tra a transformational human, like you you want your IQ to be increasing all the time, yes. decreasing. Yes. Yes. But yes. the real thing is, what's easier? Is it easier in the moment to watch that short or to doom right. scroll down your right. exactly. feed, or is it you know, or is it producing content? Because when you and I sit down to write something, like you're you're recent email on uh, slup 332 i was like oh jay finally hit this one i i used it last summer and and talked about it created a whole thing on it but you didn't even tell it, me about it i had no i idea. should it's have told you but stuff, it, it was it's it's pretty Amazing nuanced stuff. it's a it's a yeah. fun fun molecule there but but that takes work uh, for us to yeah. think it through and to write yeah, yeah, structure yeah. Yeah. and um and i think it's uh, we've made it too easy for humans to just consume information but maybe we could help people produce more great things because everyone's got a creative genius and I, I think that's where peptides and some of the things we'll talk about today can help wake people up um, but the first thing we got to do is get rid of that big interference with the distraction of social I need media. To, uh, for sure I, I i need to start messaging you quarterly to be like all right what's latest on your game because yeah i mean so i was actually familiar with slop i love that i uh, i was familiar with it about what 17 or 18 months ago when the studies first came out from the university of florida yeah, but it was just another one of those like, oh, you know, it's a, a exercise mimetic. Cool. There's a lot of them. Um, and I had no idea. And then all of a sudden, some of my like fitness and bodybuilder guys started telling me about it, like essentially about three months ago. And I was like, eh, again, you know, bodybuilder, not really my, my biohacking scheme. And then 
you know, I started talking to some biohackers in the Euro- in the UK, not UK, but in Europe, uh, Ibiza and Spain. And they were like, dude, this product is unbelievable. So anyway, I've literally only been using it for 10 days and I really love it, but we're rabbit holing right now. Cause that you're right. You just read the email that came. Um, so let's talk about peptides. So obviously peptides it's, if we go back to September, I think you and I spoke right before they did that. Right. I think our podcast was about a year ago and, and it was yep. right before yep. they classified you know, the 26 peptides that we all know and love as class two, uh, and then, you know, restricted the compound pharmacies, as you know, and I know there's still compounders out there that are making them and they're like, Hey, come shut me down. This is my business, my livelihood. I don't care, but it's a weird world right now, Reagan. Um, we're kind of like in a fine line, you know, obviously a lot of, uh, clinical people, chiropractors, osteopaths, you know, are not even now getting their peptides which is crazy to think uh, from compounding pharmacies are getting it from research. I mean, again, it's a very nebulous world right now. Where do you think we're really going? Do you think that the FDA truly has the purview slash oversight and even I would say legal authority to, to, to put peptides in this tiny little box like they want to do it? Well, uh, I, I think, um, you know, if you, if you just look at the function of the FDA and, um, you know, their, their claim is that, you know, protect public safety, you know, food and drug administration, but, right. um, but they don't regulate the practice of medicine. We have the, the 10th amendment in the constitution. If you look yep. back historically, I think, I think if you, if you understand history, um, and if we stay true to the constitutional values, which I, we, you know, who knows what's going to happen. We've got a big election coming up. So, but, uh, <laughs> let's just, let's just imagine that we're following what's the written the, down, right? Yeah. Let's. Let's just imagine we're we're following the Constitution, you know, where 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 the federal government we we uh, did not want a federal gov we didn't want an overall single government. So United States is like fifty different states, right? Totally. And each one of those states has a different practice of medicine, a different regulatory act, and different licensing processes and structures. And the federal government doesn't regulate the practice of medicine, but they will say, hey. Um, what you got, you know, if something looks um, like foul, then their their job is to step in and protect the consumer. The the big problem, if you look at the Flexner report, the Rockefellers, um, you know, they they basically started specializing medicine, yep. and they wanted to have big procedures, diagnostic codes, and they wanted to profit off of people being sick. And so, yep. anything that that was more natural, anything holistic, any cures, cures became like the the worst word in in. You know, in, in medicine, because uh, there's no such thing as a cure because then a person doesn't need the drug and therefore exactly. the Rockefellers don't right. profit. And so, so, um, so fast forward, so there's context, but fast forward to today. And, um, I think there's enough fight back after COVID. The best thing that happened is we started to see just how corrupt things were. And if you watch right. Anthony Fauci, when the Senate, oh, yeah. the house of Congress, they, they shredded him. You know, you look at the, the 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 people from you know the the congressmen from more conservative states uh, they let him have it then you know you go to the liberal states and they're like you saved all these lives and you're a yeah, miracle worker it's, it's like but how much crazy. money did you make off this I mean it's right. ridiculous right. hundreds of millions and uh, and so I think now and then we saw you know great doctors um, you know even put in jail they lost their license for yeah. Yeah. Uh, taking care of people um, you yeah. know. Thymus and alpha one, like suddenly that that would be that was a phenomenal treatment, and they they took thymus and alpha one away as quickly as possible, so they didn't lose their their emergency use authorization. So so what I'm saying is the people are skeptical now, and what the FDA did last September, now we're going to see a reversal of that. This is my prediction, and sure. I've, you know I've got some inside um, you know people who have great legal teams, and they put yeah. up a fight. Yeah. And so I'm, yep. I, I think it will be reversed because there's, it's not like they took them off the market due to safety concerns. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I agree with you hundred percent. I, I, you know, let's go deeper on this though. Cause I think a lot of people want to hear this from us. Um, they really don't have the legal purview, right? Because like, as what you just said, um, there are so many studies, both anecdotally, you know, in clinic, you know, obviously in animals. Uh, of course, there's enough in people too, where there's really no way that you could legally classify those as unsafe or known to cause harm or whatever it was a class two says that they are. So 
the, the obviously the compound pharmacies that sued and fought back, and there are many. Yeah. Um, to to even do that, right? To go against the FDA, you got to have stones and resources, right? So it's like. To, to know that they did that, it was like, because they're attorneys, and as you know, it's not about, it's not about what is true or what isn't, it's what you can prove, right? So yep. like, they knew that there's no way that they could take them down for those, you know, peptides for the, for the use cases, and again, for the studies and all that stuff. And again, we have so many people that have had their lives transformed, lives saved, yada, yada. So you're right. Um, but it's, it's even more interesting than that, because so many people stopped and so many people didn't stop. Yeah. And so here we are now almost a year, Reagan, from when they did that. And there's been no enforcement by the FDA. You know, there's been the only thing that happened that I would say was big enough was that Lily sent letters to every single compounder and research chemical manufacturer oh, yeah. Yeah. who was selling terzapatide and said cease and desist. And many did, um, but there are many that haven't still. I mean, there are still, as you know, major compounders selling, you know, generic versions of terzapatide and Lily is like up in arms and saying, you know, we spent all this money and RD and, you know, got phase three clinical trials and you can't do this. And so it's like, it's just, there's a giant morass out there, but it just doesn't seem like any needle is moving. Yeah. Well, well, because, um, you know, the compounding pharmacies who are making terzapatide are compounding it with other agents. So it's like, well, Hey, we're not using it based on what you got patented. I mean, a GLP exists naturally in the body. And so exactly. you can't put a patent on something that already exists there. We're using it exactly. in a totally different way. And that's, I think, and, and then that's where the, the pharmaceutical companies are like, okay, you're right. <laughs> so <laughs> you can have your patent and you can, you can have your mega doses of these GLP ones that are causing pancreatitis and thyroid issues <laughs> and skinny fat people walking around who aren't fit. <laughs> Um, and in the meantime, those of us who are using it are dosing it s smaller and we're making yes. sure people are building muscle along the yes. way. Yes. You know, yes. So, it's just, so yeah, I, I think it's just, uh, you know, if you understand a little bit more and, and put uh, medicine into context and you work with your local boards, for those of you who are physicians, you know, in Utah, one of the coolest things that got passed this year is uh, our Senate Bill 198, which authorized yeah. the use of perinatal tissue products, perinatal tissue stem cells from umbilical cords, placental matrix, um, amniotic fluid, as long as we're not making claims that are non-FDA approved products. And so Utah is like the safe harbor. And we need more of that. We need more states saying, hey, you know, we're like Texas, you know, right to try, you know, that was Texas was the place where that all started. And then, you know, kind of Trump brought that to the forefront. Um, but I think we just need uh, to have a little more clarity on what it means, because I see so many doctors, especially in my Go Wellness community, yeah, uh, they get really nervous. And you and I both know uh, Dr. Korth, who's amazing. Yep. And um, he's, he's been phenomenal as far as helping people understand contextually, um, like, yeah, don't make claims. We're not we're not, uh, yeah. we're not using peptides as drugs. That's, I think yeah. that's a, a, a thing that people uh, confuse this with. Um, but we're using peptides to optimize. I mean, you and I, we want to live another 100%. hundred great years and yeah. uh, we can't do that if we don't get ahead of the science because science and medicine, there's a 25 year, maybe longer gap. And, um, and we're using peptides to stay ahead of that gap and it's, it's phenomenal, but we're not using them to manage disease. Like you came to the clinic and you're like, Reagan, can you treat my, you know, my yeah, cerebral yeah. palsy? It's like, no, you're just, you're, you're like, Hey, you're, you're here uh, to optimize. I think to that point, I think the line in the sand is so strong, is so uh, strident and so demonstrable now in that you're either in the optimization camp and you don't look at your physicians or your healthcare provider as the symptom tr treater, you know, which is obviously us, uh, or you're the other people, right? And it's like, yep. it's it, the line is so now bifurcated. Uh, it's almost incredible. I mean, it, it's, it, it blows my mind to actually look at how bifurcated it's become because, you know, the people over on there, on that side, you know, with their insurance cards and their co-payments and all that stuff, I mean, they have no idea what it's like to be healthy. No. Because they listen to their provider tell them that they have this diagnosis, that diagnosis, this diagnosis, you got to get this diagnostic test. You got to, 
I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Where it's like people on our side of the fence are like, dude, I want to live to 140. I, you know, I want to be a hundred years old and climbing mountains and picking over my, picking up my great grandkids. I mean, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's truly like almost bizarre, but I mean, it's, it's two separate timelines and two separate realities now, because again, people that follow us and are like us totally dig what we're talking about. And the people that I just mentioned don't even know that we exist right? and don't really care either. No. And, and when, when I interact with them, you know, it's just like, it's so far out of context. And so I have to say right, like, right, imagine, right. um, look at your insurance, your health insurance. Like you look at your automobile insurance. Right, How right. often do you want to use your auto? Like, can you take it to Jiffy Lube and say, Hey, can you, I'm maintaining my car. You know, when you wash yeah, your car, totally do you true. use your, no, your auto insurance doesn't care. Hey, I want to get my engine more powerful. That's, it doesn't matter. But if you to get in a wreck, that's what insurance is for. And it's the same with healthcare. But I think so many Americans, we got bought into it. Thanks to Obama, yeah. oh, we yeah. got bought into this oh, idea yeah. that as long as you're a card carrying member, you're going to be healthy and all your health is going to be taken care of by your doctor. And this is what the Rockefellers wanted. They didn't want right. you asking questions. Right. And now we have people who are educated, they're knowledgeable, and they have bigger ambitions and bigger goals for their health. You know, I worked primarily with entrepreneurs and they have these really amazing businesses. They're very successful. Yep. And they're like, why would I risk leaving my health behind when I've got yep. such a great life? And that's exactly. where peptides, stem cells, all these services are great, but they're, they're not based on the disease mode. And all these people tell me every time I go to my doctor, there's one more medication or all they want to look at is cholesterol. I'm like, did they look at your ApoB, maybe your ApoA? Right. Did, they, right. did they do a carotid artery scan? Are they doing any kind of um, calcium score? No, it's just cholesterol. And then there's a drug to treat it. And then there's blood pressure medications and metformin that leads to insulin dependence. I mean, it's, it's an interesting world, but if people could step outside of it and realize that that machine is going to corrupt, I mean, it, it will bankrupt the United States. It's the average person's paying over $14,000 a year for health insurance. And what do they get in exchange? It's like you get an annual physical and, um, you know, maybe Nothing. another prescription no. and you get this false sense of security that your health is taken care of. I think it's the, the biggest, uh, ripoff probably in, in our culture right now is the cost of healthcare. And you and I, I, I mean, I agree. Dude. It's, a, it's a scam. I mean, you, you left off the other thing, which is they could give you diagnostic tests, or, which are known to be flawed, known, yeah. known to create false positives. I mean, don't even get me going in any of that. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, it's all such nonsense. I just literally, somebody just sent me this the other day and I don't want to rabbit hole because I want to ask you another question about peptides uh, deeper, but somebody sent me something the other day about um, colonoscopies yeah. and it was like a deep dive into the devices that do these and how nasty they are and how they're never cleansed and how half the time uh, the issues that are found are you are sometimes false. There's really nothing actually growing in there. And then of course, when you, you know, they, they order these invasive tests to go out and remove, to go in and remove polyps, as you know, you know, 50% of people over the age of 65 can die from post-surgical infection. I mean, dude, it is insane yeah. how insane all that is. And so to go back to what you were just saying, it's like, if you're living like us, you don't even acknowledge that because you're working on maintenance of your physical body, your spiritual body, your mental health. You're not even worried about any of that stuff. I mean, look, I, I, I think I said this to you when we, we, we saw each other in March. I wouldn't go to a doctor unless I was bleeding out, shot. Sure. Yeah, and I broken needed bone, to have yeah. shrapnel removed from my body totally. or sew me up to die. Yeah. Uh, I text guys like you. I text other physicians who are friends. If ever something is, I get a very powerful diagnostic blood, you know, laboratory report once a year. And then I go by that. Obviously I go by feel. I go by, you know, maintaining a very lean physique, training intensely, eating right, you know, using all these different var various therapeutics and stuff from a standpoint of optimization. But it's, it's so backward and so inverted at this point, Reagan, that like, I mean, it bought where it comes for me and bothers me is my own family, right? Like I have all this knowledge, all this access to things and they're still on that. Path. Yeah. And I, and I literally can't even offer, and I don't attempt to, but like there's been times in my life where I was like, Hey man, just ask me, you know, I'm happy, but they just continue to go down that path, dude. Listen yeah. to their doctors. It's I got this diagnosis. I got that diagnosis. 
Yeah. It's insane, dude. Got to take it easy. You know, that's where aging kicks in is when you, you believe in your diagnosis and <laughs> it's, totally it's, it, it's really like, that's, that's how things start going downhill really, really fast, but it's totally there's some true. power to it because you're victimized by the disease that you've been diagnosed with. Literally, so, dude. so then you can get leverage, you know, you could. You could tell Monica, Jack, we could get, we could get, let's keep, let's create a diagnosis for you that then Monica would just like have a little more empathy for your, you know, some of the things that you, you, you know, she may not like. <laughs> it's totally true, dude. It's it's just, so, I, I, th th that's what happens. People go and they get a diagnosis and then they become their diagnosis. It's it. Yeah. How many times, and, and, and this is woo, but it's true. If you didn't go to find out that you had a uh, stage blank cancer internally, would you actually have a cancer internally? Because again, what happens? We, we're nothing more than our thoughts. You know, if we get into this quantum stuff, we're nothing more than our thoughts. So if they tell us we have this, then all of a sudden we start worrying about it. Yeah. And now we start creating these ideas that we have this and we might die of this, or this is going to be okay. this and it's going to cause this. And if I don't do this and now I got to get chemotherapy and I mean, dude, it's, it's pretty abusive. I mean, I, I would rather, I would rather not go. If I have cancer, I'll yeah. find out. Well, and, I don't and care. yes. And, and I'm at the other side where I'm, I'm like, I want to detect things as quickly as possible so that there is not some kind of unraveling that will happen because I don't believe in the diagnosis. I believe in patterns right. and I believe exactly. the body is constantly in this influx. And so exactly. So I think it's just the way you frame it, but, but to your point, like you'd never want to be like, you know, for, for someone to tell you, you've got six months to live. It's like, well, how arrogant is that? And, you know, but here's what we're going to do, you know? And so, um, right, right, right. So let's, let's talk about some of the cool things people could do maybe to, to figure out what's going on in their health. And then well, before, before we do, before we get into plasma and stem cells and the, the meat of this, I really did want to ask you, cause I know you're really at the tip of the spear on this stuff. Like what peptides are you guys using right now? Or that are really fascinating to you that very few people know about. So I think, um, the ACE, um, uh, 31, ACE 031, um, it, it's a myostatin inhibitor and, you know, Brian Johnson, who is phenomenal as far as like bringing some very cool technology to the forefront. You know, he did gene editing to, you know, inhibit myostatin and, and, and actually what, what I find with ACE 31 is, is it's a great way to build muscle and, and have like energy in the tank to do two, three more reps per set. Like, and, and some of you may be like, oh, that's nothing, but you know, I'm talking, you know, guys in their forties, fifties. Yeah, over time, 60s. it means a lot. It means a ton. Yeah. And, and then not only that, but, um, your recovery is faster with ACE 31. There's one of the studies where they took, um, these, uh, postmenopausal women who had sarcopenia and, um, what they found is that these women, uh, they lost, uh, about 9% of fat and they gained 5% of lean muscle mass in 29 days, um, using ACE 31. And so. Uh, I just think that's a, a peptide, you know, cycling that a couple times a year. You don't want to turn it on all the time. Yeah. Um, but those are phenomenal. Then, um, you know, the, the other things I'm super excited about is stacking the Humanin with SS31, Mot C, 5 amino 1 MQ, and then methylene blue. So, you know, and, and you can cycle a couple of those at a time. I'll, I'll swap them out throughout the week and do bigger doses. And, um, I've just seen like crazy endurance levels improve. Like I just did the same. I have this, uh, this ride that I do on my gravel bike where it's my BO2 training, BO2 yeah. max training. And, um, my heart rate, just by being on that stack from a month ago, my, my heart rate, I couldn't get it to zone three, the way I wanted to on some of the climbs. Uh, and I went faster. So I, I was able to, you know, keep my heart rate low ride the same distance at faster speeds um and feel like great after the the workout just by being on this i didn't do anything different so so uh, yeah i think those are those are some areas that i'm fascinated would with you right would now. you add slip to any of those to that stack i mean because obviously technically it's also a mitochondrial i mean it is an, an estrogen agonist but i mean it also optimizes or upregulates mitochondria would that be because i'm noticing again and just today was my 10th day of using that um my cardio is way easier yeah. and I definitely have what I would consider three or four more 
reps, you know, when I'm training pretty intensely, because I obviously I train to positive muscle failure. I don't lift heavy, but I go to 20, 25 reps or whatever when I can't do another rep. And I feel that it's extended my rep range by two or three reps. So, I mean, I'm totally with you. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm familiar with ACE. I've used it. Um, but I like the idea of being able to do that because obviously progressively over time, that helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The ACE uh, zero through one's phenomenal. It's better for strength than the, the slot 332. Um, uh, you could add the slot 332 in. I, you know, I just need to find a better source for it. The one yeah. I had There's a just year. One research company. I know. And I was like, I don't like using them very long, but I have to be, you and I, like we put our bodies through a lot for our, our, our clients. Like you guys have yeah. no idea how many science experiments Jan and I have done. Yeah. And I always okay. tell my patients, if I die, ask, <laughs> ask my wife, what was Reagan putting into his body? What was the name of science in the name of being a guinea pig for all of you guys? Well, you see, you read my emails. I said it today. I'm like, Hey man, going to be out in front i don't care but uh, yeah that's what i saw yeah, I'm I mean, like, oh, the mouse the, if the mice could run 70 for 70 percent farther without lifting a paw um what could that do for us and i actually noticed a big jump but i didn't want to continue on it yeah yeah i mean it's it's uh again 10 days on it it's pretty amazing and i and i know people um that have been on it now for three almost three months and they're the leanest they've ever been and like they're not like you and I and that they're super meticulous. So I'm kind of interested. I mean, I'm, I'm going to definitely give it a go for three or four months. Um, what about um, just before we again, jump, because I know, you know, all this stuff, what about, what is your thoughts on low dose naltrexone mm. to redose to, to, to reset receptor sensitivity? It's all over the place. And obviously I tried to have one of my docs call it a script for me and Monica the other day. And my God, dude, here in Florida, they wanted to write a 50 milligram script. I'm like, no, oh, geez, that's not low dose. <laughs> You're like, I'm just looking for a, like one and a half. They're like, no, no. We, yeah. They, they must be addicted to opiates is what the milligram, yeah. dude. Man, you'd just be, uh, yeah, you'd be great. You'd just be like slurring, but, um, yeah, low dose naltrexone, the best thing for the endorphin release, for stimulating the opiate growth factors. Um, it's great for autoimmunity. We use it for our thyroid patients a lot, especially, you know, Hashimoto's or Graves sure, patients. Sure. But um, I also find that, that, yeah, patients who have a lot of pain and we're doing regenerative medicine, man, that just smooths things out. They sleep deeper. Or if people are trying to get off opiates, that's what it's for. Or even, um, you know, some people get uh, hooked on like feel free or kratom, and yeah. um, and so you can use low dose naltrexone, and then they go to drink it the next day and don't feel anything. So it's well. So so this is from this is from a very advanced biohacker that you probably know. I will leave his name off the air right now, but we'll talk at, when we disconnect uh, from Europe. And he says that he's been experimenting for about five months now to reset all of his receptors from a peptide standpoint therapeutic testosterone his androgen receptors and he says that his protocol is the most unbelievable thing he's ever done in his life and he feels like everything that he takes now is like a virgin to it and you know he's he's a little older than i am he's 56 so okay. he he swears by it and you know i'll send it to you i mean again it's probably nothing you don't already know okay. I mean, it's just a four and a half it's a four and a half milligram tab yep. start off broke it into fourths two weeks fourths two weeks half Yep. And then and then one and then progress for as long as you want up to six months based on you know how you feel to whatever medications or peptides or whatever you introduce. But he says it's the most profound thing that he's ever done because he feels like all of his receptor sensitivity is like virgin to whatever it is that he uses. So he's actually like he says that BPC and TB five hundred, um, once he did this was like turning on the lights in his brain. He was like. What in the hell? Really? You know, and he hasn't even used any nootropic peptides, but he was just like a microdose of BPC TB500 together. And he was like, and then, now, by the way, this guy, just so you know, he has um, full contact because he was a, he fought. Okay. So he it. probably has, okay. you know, a little bit of uh, TBI or whatever sure. like that. But he said that it was insane. I mean, he, cause he's used TB, BPC and TB for a long time. And he said he never felt the, uh, response that he got and again he's just microdosing you know same doses that you and i would use or play around with but he said it was wow yeah and, and he's just using the ldn and just and LDN. yeah that's that's how we start people you know one five 
for about a week and then you go up to three and then four or five is usually the set point. We'll go as high as yep. nine, but very rare. Um, yeah. And then, and, and, um, some people, they feel better at three, one, one, five. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, this, but, um, but I'm not sure that the thing I do to reset receptors is I stay on cycles for like 60 yeah. days and then cycle, yeah, and we do that with our clients too. And then you come back on it and it's like, yeah, your body's ready and you can feel a difference. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't but I, I'm curious. Yeah, shoot it over. But, um, yeah, but I, I think at the end, it'd be great for you guys. We can, we can help you out there too. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let's get into plasma and stem cells. I think it's, we're in a very crazy time. As I said, I sent you that guy, you know, who's doing multi-level peptides and now you've got stem regen. I mean, there's, dude, there's so many people you know, exosomes, there's, there's so much in the marketplace. It's almost becoming difficult for, I would assume the average consumer and not the average sheeple, you know, allopathic sick care consumer, but the, uh, the average optimization consumer, the people that we want in our funnels and our nests, it's becoming harder and harder for them to interpret like what works, you know, let's just say, let's just say that the, it's never been harder to discern yeah what our person should take down so like in your opinion and again obviously i look to you as one of the go-to guys in the stem cell cord stuff right now like what would you tell people <clears throat> well um you know you, you always want to look at the source and and this is where in in um uh the end of 21 it was actually september of 2021 the fda closed down 90 percent of the pharmacy of the laboratories that were making yep. perinatal tissue products Yep. And they did that primarily because of their marketing tech. You know, they would, they would come into the office and they'd show us pictures of like, you know, joint regeneration and making all these claims. And, you know, once again, that's, you know, if it's, if you're going to make claims, you got to follow the rules and have it be a drug. And so we, we're, we aren't using stem cells as a drug, peptides as a drug. We're using it as, you know, therapeutic agents to optimize. But, um, but the ones that were left standing, the best thing that happened is, we had to pull back. We couldn't get you know, great products. And, um, and the ones, the thing that happened is um, we were able to find a lab where we could test the bile and have not only viable stem cells post-thaw, which is really challenging when you're harvesting the tissue, but they also screened out mothers who had been vaccinated because those spike proteins can get right into the umbilical cord yeah. and you don't want those in your body. And so um, so we, we were able to work with the lab that not only did they have high viability, but high safety without the risk of vaccination, mothers are screened out. So, so the, the, the problem that happens is you can do it the right way, but most people, they don't really know what to look for. And even doctors, I find we've, we've trained thousands of clinics on regenerative medicine, uh, stem cells, peptides, all these things. And what we find is uh, a lot of them don't really know the questions to ask. They don't know, well, have you ran it through um, flow cytometry? How do you know there's even stem cells in here? What's actually in the, the tissue? And, um, and so I, I think just trying to understand how it works mechanistically is really important. And, and kind of like the, the thing you said earlier, it's like, you know, plant-based stem cells, like, okay, you can, you know, maybe for some collagen um, is good in the skin, that's fine. But, but if you're really looking for regeneration, you're going to want to do like versus like, even using like, you know, goat placentas and, you know, you can go to Mexico and you can get placentas from sharks and they'll put the stem cells in your body. Those are going to be a lot shorter lived and you have a risk of having a, a host versus graft rejection. So you got to be careful. And then the plant-based stem cells, I love plants, don't get me wrong, but they're just, they don't have nearly the same properties as you know, stem cells from umbilical cords or bone marrow or adipose tissue. So why is that guy without naming him? I already did if you're smart and listening to this podcast, but why is he able to get away with pushing that and the level that they're pushing? Is it just because it's far cheaper than an average quote unquote umbilical or mesenchymal stem cell treatment? Is that, is that why? I don't know anything about it. It was just given to me by multiple people in the last three weeks. Like check this out. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I, I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's cheaper, but it's a lot more expensive when you think about the cost of, of, you know, having this false security that you're actually doing some regeneration for your body. Right. Um, and it's not that much cheaper. I mean, 
uh, stem cell therapy, uh, when I first had my shoulder done almost you know, 14 years ago, the costs have come down three times and the viability is shot through the roof, you know, 50 times more viable than w- what it ever was. So, um, so yeah, I, I just think it's, uh, unfortunately it's just, you know, any, any kind of marketing, uh, supplement company, um, if you can put some scientific terms like peptides or stem cells on it, then people lean into it and they say, okay, well, this is the thing to do. And, and, um, it's more expensive here. So I'm going to go the cheaper route. Unfortunately, they're just not getting the, the benefits that they could. Yeah. I mean, kind of where we are. All right. We'll talk a little bit about, you know, I mean, you kind of already mentioned what's going on in Utah, but is Utah then going to be the stem cell capital of the United States probably pretty soon relative to the laws that the way they're written now, at least? Well, um, I, I can't say, uh, I can't disclose everything, but I do think it will be a, a place where innovations will happen. Utah, we, yeah. you know, with the University of Utah, that's where I, I did my undergraduate work. We are a big biotech um, state. Like we love yeah. innovations here. And, um, and so we're actually working with a, a group um, of doctors out of Argentina who they're, you know, they're literally like, they're, they're taking samples of your own stem cells or growing those. And then, but people are going to Argentina. So maybe Utah could be kind of a first home base, um, yeah. uh, for those kinds of more advanced stem cells. Cause what we're doing is, you know, we're, we're not treating conditions. We're just helping optimize the body. But I think there's, um, there's, there's certain conditions that just don't, there's, they need, uh, you actually need to regenerate the organ or the, the, the cartilage structure, um, by engineering the stem cells. And that's, that's really where I think Utah will be the first state to, where we'll be utilizing that therapy. And I, I could see it in the next three to three to five years. So what are your thoughts on exosomes versus stem cells? I mean, obviously we're both familiar with both, um, same thing, you know, exosomes were removed by the FDA by and large from a marketing standpoint. And a lot of the, obviously the people that were practicing or, or positioning them, I should say back in 2019, 2018, 2020, or now no longer. In fact, as I told you, um, in the last couple of medical conferences I've gone to in the last, actually the last three, I always go up to the stem cell boost or I mean the exosome boost, a chimera, I know you know them all, but like, yeah. you know, and I'll be like, Hey, I want to talk to the CEO. You know, I want to bring them on the podcast or I want to bring on one of your, you know, head geeks or one of your chief science innovators and none of them will come on the podcast. Like they will not. They, they can't. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, then it's seen as marketing, right? Yeah. But I mean, like, why not talk about the science, right? Like I, I don't want them to promote. I, I, I really just want to get into the science of it. I mean, I, I'm fascinated by stem cells and exosomes. I'm yeah. fascinated by plasmophoresis. I'm, fa- I'm fascinated by all these you know, new, interesting ways, uh, to distribute, um, you know, let's call them life enhancing biomolecules, but like, you know, what are your thoughts on stem cells versus exosomes? I mean, is there a place where you can use both, you know, equally, you know, over time? I mean, do you you tend to avoid one or the other? I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So, um, and the, the great thing about exosomes, uh, even, uh, we have a, uh, stem cell, uh, protocol and product you can do it at home and that and now yeah. with cord yeah. plasma yeah. yeah um you know we're the first clinic that i know of that never started using cord plasma once the study came out that you could you know get the same benefits as doing plasmapheresis at a fraction of yeah. the cost in the comfort yeah. of your own home with just 10 weekly injections that's been very exciting and so um but i think the difference between exosomes and stem cells well first of all when when you have a, a vial of umbilical cord tissue allograft, there's going to be exosomes in there because exosomes are the signaling properties from stem cells. So Arnold Kaplan, who named mesenchymal stem cell, and eventually he changed it to medicinally, medicinal signaling cells. And these signals, you know, exosomes are part of the signals. There's actually 261 identified peptides that are in uh, a vial of stem cells. So you're getting this, the nature's, uh, you know, this, these flourishing peptides as well, but but I think exosomes turn up the volume. So we'll use stem cells, but then we'll, we'll, we'll couple it with, with uh, exosomes. And you'll see that the stem cells have better signaling properties. It, it's almost like the exosomes can go into the areas that are damaged 
and they can mobilize your body's own stem cells. So one of the studies they, they did, uh, they induced strokes in rats. And then they did exosomes intranasally and, and they tagged the exosomes to see where the exosomes would go. And the exosomes were able to clump into the areas where the rats had the stroke in the brain, the hemorrhagic stroke. And then you could see the body's own stem cells start to regenerate the tissue. So, so we use exosomes to go deeper into the, the, the tissue cavity for our patients with like kidney failure. It's, a, it's very helpful for chronic kidney disease. Sometimes we'll use it in uh, patients who have like fibrotic livers. We've done it with congestive heart failure. People have had heart attacks or, you know, they go into AFib frequently and don't want another ablation or to get a pacemaker. And it seems to really help. Um, phenomenal. What about prostate? I've never asked anybody about this, but what about BPH or, you know, stage one prostate cancer or, you know, metastasis where it's close, but they, you know, how they, I mean, I'm sure you, maybe you don't, I mean, if you've, if you've never met anyone in your family or in your close, you know, personal, uh, inter interpersonal circles, who's had an early stage prostate diagnosis, dude, what a joke. Um, that yeah. whole thing Holy is. cow. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, the biopsies, I mean, half your prostate's gone by the time you, you, the, you know, your rights. Yeah, don't be careful on that. Don't get the biopsy. Like, just no. There's so I mean, many the good world, scans. So yeah, the whole thing, right? Like, I've I've counseled so many people about radical prostatectomies and how high risk they are, and like, you know, your sexual function could be gone. You never get an erection again. You have to get a penile implant. Don't even get me going. But is there anything around the lines of exosomes and stem cells, like latest and greatest advanced stuff that can really reduce the size of, of people with BPH? And, and again, you as you know, I mean, this is a massive issue for aging men. We yeah. almost all have BPH by the time we're in our early fifties. Yeah. Yep. And so the, the biggest benefits we've seen is, um, so, uh, if, if men are comfortable with injecting themselves with peptides in the perineum, um, which we get them comfortable with it, it's phenomenal. The difference you can make in, uh, any kind of prostatitis or, uh, benign, uh, prostate hypertrophy. So. Yeah. So um, the other thing is if you do um, exosomes in the area or stem cells, that, that can be beneficial, or you can even do uh, uh, intravenously and it makes a huge difference. But where we start is you've got to clean out all that inflammatory cytokines first in, yeah. in the blood. So you've got to clean out the, cord pl the, the plasma. That's where cord plasma is really exciting because it's so easy. Because once you clear out all those those pro-inflammatory cytokines, then your prostate can breathe. And then the secondary thing is you got to work on your lymphatics. Like a lot of people don't think about it, but our body's just a hydraulic system. So if you remove all of the complicated systems, it's just like things have to drain. And the lymphatics is the major drainage system. And that major repository is right where your bladder is yeah. and your colon. Oh, and what sits right there too is your prostate. So just from- yeah. A simple mechanics perspective, a lot of men are not getting that, that lymphatic flush, that lymphatic circulation. They're not having good bowel movements. They're eating garbage food. And that's yeah. increasing those, those molecules in the blood because your blood carries nutrients, but it also transports waste. Primarily that waste gets deposited in your lymphatic system. So, you know, there's things we do to, to get rid of that toxic accumulation in the lymphs. And then we start the therapies on the prostate. And it's, so far, it works really well for most men. That's awesome. I did not know that about, about that. I mean, I just, I've, you know, I've dealt with probably four or five different people in the last year that have, you know, had a really bad BPH diagnosis. And like you said, you know, have these insane, um, you know, incisions and biopsies and just, it's just, I mean, dude, I mean, I've never seen anything. It's like a rabbit hole of rabbit holes. You could literally go to five different urologists and they would each give you a completely different diagnosis. Right. Yeah. You know? well, and there, even their routes of diagnostics, you know, uh, the, the new ones are like, Hey, we don't want to do a biopsy. We now have the Tesla scan where it's an M it's a three dimensional MRI. We can see everything is going on there. And Usually it's not a problem, but the problems yeah. happen when you do the biopsy. It's, uh, yeah. Wow. Of course. I mean, we know, I mean, just like I said, with just the, the, the colonoscopy, the surgical equipment, I yep. mean, you don't, you don't know. 
No, no, we, yeah, that's where we work with a company called Advanced uh, Imaging, and 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 they do virtual colonoscopy. So that right. actually, it's it's just through CAT scan, and yep. there's you know there you you, you got to put some air in your colon so it kind of yep. plates it, and that works great. Yeah, and by the way, when do you guys with the with the digital stuff now? Like, when do you recommend people start actually having those tests done? Um, Forty colonoscopy or. Yeah, colonoscopy and, and, and even prostate screening. Yeah, yeah, forties a great time to do it. Um, yeah, especially yeah. like di digital prostate screening. Yeah, forty or if, they, if there's symptoms, you know, obviously you can do it sooner. But um, you know, the the best time to take care of a problem is before it's symptomatic. So yeah, yeah, I mean we're big into early screening, and um, that's where you know comprehensive blood work, metabolomics, gut testing. Um, VO2 max, crowded artery, these are all really important indicators. And then, um, but, but yeah, I think there's, there's simple things that will show up in the blood before your prostate, like look at your, look at your monocytes, look at your creatinine levels, yeah. and then yeah. don't just look at PSA. I think that's where a lot of people, they, they kind of, you know, they get misled. They think PSA is the only thing that you can look at, but there's other markers. Yeah, hundred percent. Dude, this has been an amazing podcast again. Let me throw up some of the stuff. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you would like to cover, like maybe about your practice? You know, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk and, and, uh, it's always fun always. because, uh, you know, you and I can go on so many different dimensions and I, I, I appreciate that. But, um, but I think the, the big thing is, you know, we, we work with people who, you know, they, they want help. They want, uh, you know, some, some experts leading them. So we have great, uh, fitness advisors with master's degrees. We do you have very comprehensive testing. And then, you know, we, we stack peptides based on what your labs show. And then if you're in, interested in regenerative medicine, um, one of the best things we can do for you is, is, um, get you with, uh, Dr. Steinle, who you and Monica worked with yep. and, uh, get an evaluation. Don't let, you know, we have a no pain policy. Don't bring pain into your future. That free rent's very expensive for you. So, yes. um, so get rid of it soon and, and, uh, yeah, we, we, we can help. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, Reagan, it's always a pleasure. I mean, you threw me for a loop with Sloop. I had no idea that you actually used that. I, I honestly didn't know anybody was using it outside of like universities. So that's pretty cool. Um, but man, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely a tip of the sphere podcast as it always is. So guys and gals, as always, uh, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Uh, if you are a hard charging, successful entrepreneur, uh, and there are many, uh, and you're interested in literally working with the tip of the sphere provider, I can't give this guy a bigger seal of approval and endorsement. It's again, East West health clinic. He's out in Utah. It's a short flight anywhere nowadays, right? Cause in, yeah. where, regardless of wherever you are, you know, even if you're not even in the continental United States, you could probably be to him in a four hour flight. Um, also, he's also, they're also on YouTube too. Let me give you that link. And, uh, I would just say again, I'm grateful that you came on here today. We had an amazing conversation. So again, guys, please. As always, support these amazing folks. Go to his YouTube, go to his IG, or even visit him at Acuia. Excuse me. Acu, how do, I can't even pronounce it. AccuEastWest.com. AccuEastWest.com. I was like trying to say Acuia, but AccuEastWest.com. Uh, appreciate you, Reagan. Uh, appreciate so remember, you. ladies and gentlemen, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. 